welcome. This video is going to review how to use part tracking by account. Now part tracking by account is SBC's major file where you go in to determine sales by item by account. So to get there you're going to start by going into the general files letter T and then number three your inventory tracking and then letter F part tracking by account. If you have a multi-store scenario and part tracking is split up at your stores, it's going to ask you for the store ID of the sale that you're looking for. If you don't, you're not going to see this message. It's going to pop you straight into enter your clerk code, so I'm going to do so. And if I had a series of save library jobs, it would have stopped there first. I don't on this system, so it takes me straight into the report. So first it's going to ask you how you want to access the data, either by account number or by part number. If you're looking for a specific account's history, you're obviously going to enter it by account number. If you're looking for um, a specific part number's history, regardless of the account, um, you'd choose P uh, from the drop-down menu, part number, for, and uh, enter the part number in this area over here. If you don't have a specific account, you don't have a specific part number, you're looking at a line of parts, or you want to use filter criteria at a later time in the report, you can simply bypass all of this. You have to pick one or the other. Uh, if you put an asterisk in that field, it encompasses all accounts or all part numbers in the system. Um, the only thing that this does do is it changes how the screen sorts for you. So it's either going to show you information by account or by part on a sort order on the report screen. I'm going to choose a specific account, so I'm going to type it in here, 109, hit my enter key. If I wanted to enter um, different information, whether I'm using a date field or a specific part number, I can do so in either the filters area here or the compare option. Now one of the nice things about part tracking by account, and I'm going to click on this yellow help button, is that to report upon information you don't only have to use the information that lives in part tracking by account. So in PTA, um, if you look in this list, it says file as PTA, and then you look over here on the left, you'll see all of the information that writes to part tracking by account when you finish a ticket. Part number, which includes the manufacturer code, account number, your transaction code, your invoice date, your how much that you sold each line for, what the core was, what the cost was, how many pieces that were shipped, and so on. But you'll notice if you look lower down the list, you'll see um, that there are other files or other pieces of information that can be used in part tracking by account to run specific reports. One example of this is a rebate uh, report. So we have a customer who wants to create a rebate report. Um, number one, they have specific parts within a line that are applicable for that rebate. So I put that information into one of my part fields in my inventory record, and you'll notice this column um, says INV in it. It will allow you to enter that information and report upon that information regardless of whether that was on the actual invoice. If I hit the F2 key a couple of times, I'm going to get down to a screen where it has um, account number information. If I wanted to use the account number as, or the account number information as a filter, I can do that as well. So an example of this is I have a, a rebate ID that is sitting on the account record um, that needs to be included on the report. So if you'll notice my column has now changed to ARF. In any appropriate field, I can put the, um, the rebate identification number and then I can add that to my output file here in part tracking by account and that will allow that information to be included on my report again regardless of the fact that it isn't sitting somewhere on my invoice. So you can pull information from a number of different files in and use them to filter or use them to actually report upon on your sheet of paper if you wanted to. If you have any questions on that please call SBC and we can help you out with those. I'm going to press the home key to get back to the main screen and because I have no filters that I want to use right at this point I'm going to hit the home key 
And then I'm going to start top down uh, to run through what this screen says. So I'm going to click on the report options in the upper right. My report date. Do I want a different date than my current calendar date to print on my report? If I do, I can enter that information here. Otherwise, I press my enter key. Do I have a specific report title that I want? I'm going to leave part tracking by uh, part tracking report, but you can enter anything that you'd like. And do I want to run the report in the background? Now, if I want to run the report in the background, I may want to do so because I have a lot of search criteria that I'm using to find specific parts or specific parts sold or a specific salesperson or something like that in a large series of references. Now you'll have to keep in mind that part tracking by account has a single line of record for every single line item that's on every single invoice that's ever been created in your system. So this is a ton of information. In your criteria, if you've specified that you're going to look for a specific date range and a specific clerk and maybe a specific part range, your system has to go through lots of pieces of information to find and return this information to you. So if you're sending that information to an email, if you're sending it to paper, if you're creating a file or something like that, you may want to do uh, send this to the background so that it's not keeping your monitor busy while it's collecting all of this information. The other reason you might want to send your report to the background is if you plan to schedule it uh, to run monthly, daily, Tuesdays at 2, whenever you want that to run, uh, we need to say yes, we want to run it in the background so that we can schedule that. I'm going to click the home key to get back to the main page and I'm going to go to my print options. Now just like all of the rest of our report generator screens, you've got the option to print to paper. I can print to my screen. I can create a PDF or a text. I can email it wherever I want it to go or I can choose none which probably isn't applicable because you're really not going to be affecting the information that's in your part tracking file on a regular basis. So I would say that printer or email or screen are probably the top three that you would use. I'm going to click on screen. My report format. Do I want to show my detail, meaning a line for each manufacturer and part number that's sold? Or do I want to show with the comments as well? If I want to show comments as well, I choose the letter C. If I just want to show the parts, I show letter D. An S for summary allows you to summarize information, perhaps if you're trying to show a specific account what parts that they bought for a specific time period, or um, if you had an actual part range that you wanted to specify, you could do so here. And then T for total is just going to give you a single line item. So maybe you want a total of the dollars sold for a specific line for a specific time period, you could use that totals. I'm going to go back and choose detail. Extended captions, do I want the captions in English? That's up to you. It depends on how many fields you have in your output here. And then top of form at primary subtotal. So you have the ability to subtotal this information. Maybe I want to do it by account number if I have a, a bunch of accounts showing up. Maybe one, I want to do it by part number. Um, so this is saying, do you want a um, page break in between the information as it's being subtotaled. You can choose the answer to that. My output form down here is set up the way that I like it. Account number, part number, unit cell, invoice number, invoice date, number of pieces shipped, the job number, the cost, and the transaction code. Now I'm going to actually space out a couple of these because I perhaps don't need the job number. I don't want my employees to see cost. And the transaction code just doesn't matter for what I'm trying to run. Um, so I'm going to press my home key. Um, or I've used the transaction code in the filter. That's the other reason that you wouldn't need to show your transaction code. I'm going to press my home key to get off of this screen. My selection options is the box where, that I was already at. So I, uh, the only selection criteria I have here is that I'm looking at account 109. My calculation options. Again, I can determine my gross profit on some of these reports, um, but in this case, I want to extend my unit cell by my number of pieces shipped. So I'll have an extra column that's showing me what the extension of each line is in my cell. And then do I want to treat negative extend by values as negative, positive, or zero? 
if I show negative, then it's actually going to subtract credits from my debits. Um, positive is going to add them to the total, um, and zero is going to completely ignore them. So this is going to be different per scenario, and you determine what the most appropriate choice is for you. I'm going to say negative for this example, and I'm going to click on my home key to return. Okay, last one is my update sort options. So most of the time we have the screen set up to sort by at least your invoice date, and it's going to sort in descending order. This is because this screen is available when you go into point of sale. Actually, the default screen is what you see. That's where you set up what your employees will see when they're in point of sale. I want my employees to be able to find the most current or recent tickets in the top of the report as they go into part tracking by account from that point of sale screen instead of them having to search through a bunch of them, either sorting it by account number, sorting it by part number, or even worse, sorting it in ascending order so that the first tickets that the customer has ever made with me are showing up on the screen first. So that's why we sort this in descending order. And then the subtotal compare lengths. So the idea here is that I can take the first or the first and the second sort fields up here and I can subtotal them. Now invoice date is a bad example so I will come back to this but I could sort it by um, account number and I in this area here tell it how many characters in my account number field I want to sort it by. So if for example your accounts start with a letter A, B, C, D, E and you want to be able to sort your account number uh, report, you want to sort your report by the first character in the account number. All I would put in this subtotal compare lengths is a 1. This is a little bit confusing to use. If you have any questions on it, please call SBC and we can walk you through it. Last question, remove selected entries. In my opinion, this should never be a yes. This is the one and only place in SBC other than going through the archive where you can find a list that includes all of your sales for each account for each part number specifically in that, in that group. Um, if you remove those entries, it's going to be tougher for us to find information if you're wanting to re review that, regardless of whether the customer buys from you, maybe his business is closed, um, doesn't really matter this is going to be the place where we can go to figure out what their gross profits were in a certain amount of time. This is the place where we can go to see what kind of prices that you've been selling your parts for on an individual level as opposed to going into the archive. Now, 30 years ago, space was a big deal. So this remove selected entries was there and some people did delete information that was older than two years old because at that point it was kind of unnecessary and it was just taking up space in their computer. That's really no longer an issue. So unless you have a reason to go through and remove particular entries out of your system, I would say to leave this a no. I'm going to press the home key to return back to my main screen. And then across the bottom, I've got my escape to get out. Enter will start my screen. Control P will print just what you're seeing right here on the screen. Chain, control X will change my printer. I'm not printing to a printer, so this doesn't matter for me. F5 recall job, there's a training video that will walk you through how to use that F5 recall job pro, uh, button, so I'm going to ignore that for now. F10 to save parameters, and then Control F to change my options. Um, my options are really going back to asking uh, whether I want to have extended copies and things like that. Uh, excuse me, extended captions, so I'm not going to click on that for now. I do want to save my parameters, so I'm going to click on save parameters. I'm going to type in PTA, and I'm going to put my initials at the end of this report. Uh, we do find that part tracking by account tends to have a ton of saved library jobs, and if you don't put your initials there and your management decides to go and clean things up, reports that you've saved may be deleted. So I'd suggest throwing your initials on there if a lot of people are accessing the files. I press the enter three times and that brings me back to this screen and now my report is saved and I can run it in the future anytime I'd like. So I'm going to hit the enter key to begin and you'll notice that across my page my account number is here, my part number, the unit cell, 
my invoice number, my invoice date, the quantity of pieces shipped, and then my extension. Uh, so if you look at the second line, $7.50 times two pieces is $15. So now notice that I have two large credits that are at the bottom of this screen. Uh, so if I was to do the math, I'm actually going to end up with a negative value of what my customer has purchased. Um, so perhaps I want to adjust that. I don't want to show anything that's older than a certain date. Um, or I want to separate my returns and show them on a different report. Any of that is up to you. Okay, now I'm going to go back into part tracking by account. I'm going to press my enter and put in my clerk code here. And now my part tracking by account report that I set up is the save library job in the upper left corner. Keep in mind the default parameter is what your, your employees are seeing when they're in point of sale. So if there are things in that report like gross profit or cost that you don't necessarily want your uh, employees or even worse your customers, if your employee happened to pull that report up in front of a customer, you may want to change your default parameter to be very, um, to, to be very watered down so that your employees and your customers aren't seeing things like cost or gross profit. I'm going to go into my saved library job. I am going to hit the home key and I'm going to change my sort so that you can see how this works. I'm going to sort it by part number and I want to sort it by the entire part number. Now my part number field is 18 characters manufacturer plus part number. So the most number I can put in this sub subtotal compare length is 18. If I wanted to sort by maybe the first three uh, letters in my part number, maybe I wanted to sort by my vendor code instead, I would just put a three here and then it's going to sort my field that sits up here by whatever number of fields is in my subtotal compare lengths. So it's simply going to sort part number by the first three characters that show up. So I'm going to change this back to 18 and I'm going to hit the home key and I'm going to hit the return key and you'll notice that not only does it split it up but because it's splitting it up by the entire part number I'm getting subtotal lines on every single line of information so here's my subtotal for my Wix 51516 here's my subtotal for my 51515 and so on if I wanted to subtotal Um, key slash n by the first three characters which is just my vendor code and I hit my enter key you'll notice that now I have all of my Wix subtotaled together and so on so this is an option here if you have any questions about how part tracking by account works please call SBC we can show you so much more um, that is available to to do in the part tracking by account file but this is a very important file it's extremely useful and um, you can do a number of different things with it especially when it comes to things like rebate reports sending customers lists of what they've purchased over the last year with you um, or trying to even get customers to buy more from you um, so please call us whenever you have any questions and we can walk you through how to use this to your advantage uh, please call SBC at 800 829-4722 or you can email us at sbctraining at autolog.com. Thank you so much.